From crafters to contractors, they all love woodworking with epoxy. In this video, we're gonna show you the tips and tricks to take a mini project and turn it into something fancy. We're gonna show you step by step how to take a river table and turn it into a clock. The sky's the limit. You can do chessboard, you can do serving trays, cheese boards, everything in between. Learn right now, step by step, the secrets to epoxy and wood. Visit StoneCoatCountertops.com, stay tuned, and enjoy the video. Remember, when you subscribe to our channel, click on the red subscribe button and be sure to ring the bell so you get notified every time we have a new video. Thanks again. Okay guys, we're looking for something to pull off of our form after we're done, something that's reusable that we can use over and over again, and I think acrylic is a good answer for that. I see a lot of people pour over acrylic and it peels off really simply. Let's test it out. We're taking small river table kits where people can't maybe afford a giant wood slab and they want to learn the trade. We found which one we're getting right there. I think that'll contrast good, let's do it. All right guys, step one, we're gonna take this acrylic and we're gonna cut it into strips. The reason we're gonna cut it into strips is then we have a way to make forms over and over again on our small craft projects without rebuilding or buying another thing. We're gonna use hot glue, we're gonna use acrylic, and we're gonna get started right now. We're gonna cut our strips in two inch widths. The reason we're doing that is none of our projects are taller than two inches and it'll catch any spillage. Pro tip, you wanna use a saw blade with a lot of tooth per inch because it's gonna cut cleaner on acrylic. You don't wanna use a rough blade, it'll chip it out. Fine tooth saw blade worked wonders on that acrylic. Perfect size strips, they're reusable. Let's make our form hot glue and acrylic. I think acrylic's gonna be perfect for this craft style project. It wouldn't work so well on a giant river table because acrylic's expensive unless you can reuse it. So because I can reuse this over and over again on a small project with hot glue on the strips, I think it's gonna be the perfect tool of choice. Let's test it without any spray release and see how well it comes off of this mold. Does this acrylic make me look better? <laughs> what should we do while it warms up? Oh, let's go get the wood. Step one in woodworking school. Pick out your project and get ready to pour. What we're gonna do is actually make our form around our project. How wide do we want it? How deep do we want it? We got our pieces picked out. I have a really good idea of where I'm gonna go with this project, but I'm gonna use our project coat. We designed this to be a hybrid style epoxy. For a small scale project like this, it helps us learn how to pour casting as well as our top coat and our seal coats all in one. You wouldn't want to use this on large scale for full durability and full heat and scratch resistance, but for a project like this to learn woodworking with epoxy without the added cost of specialty products, this is designed for you. Let's get started. I really like the character and all these different pieces that we've chosen. I think these are going to make good fun projects. I really like that this was cut out of the same piece of wood and then it's just flipped into itself. I, I think this is going to be a very neat centerpiece. And how big do we want it? I think we'll go, I think we'll go like, like that big. So I need to glue a piece right here. So I'm gonna just start gluing these in. Okay, once I get that kind of tacked, I'm gonna come through here and just make it watertight. When I started this, I should have ran this strip right at the edge of this slab, but because I made a mistake and ran it long here, I'll just cut this one to size. That cuts good. All right, I really like this hot glue acrylic idea. I think it's gonna work well. I'm gonna just tape the outside just to be safe. I'll use some inexpensive masking tape to stop any leaks, just in case that hot glue has any kind of hole through it. I don't think it does, but I'd rather err on the side of caution. I think we're ready for our seal coat. Let's do it. Pro tip, how do you mix a small amount of epoxy at once with a stir stick so you don't waste anything with the measuring cup? Some of the measuring cups only go up to four ounces at the very minimum. We don't need that much, this is a small project. I'm gonna take two clear cups and I'm simply going to mark them at the same height. Project coat, let's get started. Part B, part A, one to one ratio. We're gonna thoroughly mix this with a paint stick. I'm gonna just mix this until I see the color become uniform. I'm also gonna scrape the sides and the bottom of my bucket. This is a small batch, you don't need to be in a hurry and all we're doing is applying a seal coat. You can also use any excess that you mix at this time to just use in the river, that's okay. They're gonna bond together and become one piece but then you don't waste any mass. 
That's a pro tip. Guys, I think I'm gonna turn this piece into a clock. I went to Walmart to look for the parts for a clock and the hands, the minute and the second. I couldn't find it, but I did find clocks that I'm gonna cannibalize and create my own clock. So, what are you gonna make? What would you think would be a good project for this kind of a piece? Checkers, chess, cribbage, I don't know, cheese board, serving tray, what comes to mind? Let us know in the comments below. Heck, even a Lazy Susan, man, that spins around as a centerpiece on a, on a kitchen table, maybe for Thanksgiving. Heck, it'd be a great Mother's Day present. Art piece? Sample for river tables? Showcase that you can do these skills and pay the bills. All right, I think we're mixed up. Yeah, I know I'm mixed up, but I don't know if this is mixed up. <laughs> I think we're good. Let's apply our seal coat. I'm just gonna use my gloved hand and I'm just gonna apply it to the edges. Simple as that. Heat gun, blow dryer, torch, whatever you want to pop the bubbles, something with heat in it like this works fairly decent. I like to use a torch, but because we're a, an acrylic form, I think I'm just gonna use the heat gun. Okay, choices, choices. I have time to think about them. I'm gonna pour a river and I'm gonna tint it with our metallic. What color should I use? I'll think about that while this dries and then I'll come back and I'll pour the river and we'll see what this project turns into. I'll see you in a bit. Class is in session. Woodworking school projects are ready for you. We have 100 kits. It's gonna include our project coat, the kit of your choice with whatever live edge slab that you choose to make your project after and your own choice of a metallic color. This is gonna create a one of a kind unique piece you can go to stonecoatcountertops.com we have all these kits for sale right now so that you can learn woodworking with epoxy in a class style project that won't break the bank we'll see you at stonecoatcountertops.com Okay guys, time for the next step on our woodworking school project. Let's get started. What we're going to do is sand that first seal coat with 220 grit on our sandpaper. We'll wipe the dust. We'll mix a little bit more epoxy this time because we're not just doing a seal coat. We're going to fill this entire middle section of our project up. What do I tint it with? There's so many different options. I'm going to actually do black in this case, black metallic. That's going to be black and tan. I think it'll really pop and make this lighter color wood look really fancy. Let's try that. Let me know how you think that will look and what color would you choose if this was your project. Okay, I'm going to torch those bubbles out and then we'll do the rest. That looks really cool, man. That's a pretty color in there. That's sweet. I think I'm going to pour some of this excess in these cracks here too, just to fill those in and then we'll sand it all flush. All right, we're going to do the paint pyramid mix up. I'm going to use a paint pyramid and stir this up a little bit to give it a cool design. All right, we're going to let this coat dry. This is fun. It's easy. And we're learning all the steps to how to do this at scale and create any size table or conference table or project that we want using wood and epoxy. So even though I have a little air bubble coming up here, that means my edge wasn't perfectly sealed. You can do multiple seal coats, but I know I'm going to come back and do clear over this. So a little air bubble will get sanded out and we'll do clear and it'll look just fine. So don't let that deter you and make you think you made a mistake. A lot of those turn out to be happy accidents. All right, we're ready for the next step. Our project coat is nice and hard in the center portion of this project because it's poured thicker. It does generate more heat when it's poured at mass, so it hardens quicker. Out here where we filled all these cracks and check marks right here, it's still gummy and kind of tacky. That's totally normal. Don't be alarmed at the different rates of curing. Just know that you're ready for the next step. So what we're gonna do is because our project coat will tighten up. As it hardens, it almost shrinks a little bit. So we were perfectly flush with the top and now we're slightly lower than the top. So we're gonna do a clear coat. This is gonna fill that up. It's gonna get us proud or taller than the top of our project so that when we sand, it makes everything nice and flush. Okay, we're gonna get all the air out. We've done a clear coat looking down into that tinted epoxy. Therefore, we need to get it crystal clear, and that's what we're gonna do using a torch or a heat gun. You simply wait a few minutes in between each torching pass, and that will allow the next layer of bubbles to come to the surface. Stone coat countertop epoxy is unique. Because of the working time, it allows us to let this air come to the surface, even though we mix with a drill or a paint stick. Cheers! If you have excess epoxy, it's a really cool pro tip to set a receptacle aside and over time pour the different excess into that container. 
then you have a really cool epoxy blank that you could turn on a lathe or send to a friend to have them make you something cool. I have a lathe. I can make something cool. All right, we're gonna let this step dry. We'll come back tomorrow. We'll take it out of the mold. We'll sand it flush. We'll start our seal coats and get this project complete. Have you ever watched a video and wondered, how the heck did he do that? Because you forgot all the steps? These steps are simple and we've put it into a step-by-step, -step, downloadable, printable PDF found at stonecoatcountertops.com. Check it out after the video. Okay guys, we're all set up. We're ready to go for our next step. I'm gonna take this out of the mold here. We're gonna remove our masking tape. The tape didn't get affected because no epoxy leaked out. That hot glue worked very well. All right, let's heat this up with a heat gun and we'll pop these off. It takes a little bit of force. You're gonna snap those off because it's really being glued by the epoxy. It's a nice clean release, but you gotta use a little bit of force. Don't be afraid to tell it who's boss. I added a few daubs of hot glue underneath this. So I'm gonna see how clean this releases now. I'm not gonna really heat that up. I'm just gonna try to pop it off. Let's see what happens. Hey, that worked really good. That is smooth too, goodness. So that's definitely gonna be reusable. Let's go ahead and remove this hot glue. We're gonna take this in the shop, we're gonna clean it up, and we're gonna sand this epoxy so it's nice and flush on the top. We'll remove any of that black where we filled it in the cracks, and we'll be ready for our seal coat. Let's do it. All right guys, I'm gonna use a little bit of alcohol to loosen up this hot glue, and we'll be able to scrape it off. I'm just gonna use a scrap piece of acrylic. Got a scraper. Option A, option B. I got a 60 grit sanding disc on my random orbital, or I got a metal sanding disc on my grinder. This is gonna remove this very quickly and aggressively. If you don't have experience using a grinder to remove epoxy, you may wanna stick with your sander. It works really good, it just takes a lot longer. And that's okay, this is a craft project. We're learning how to use epoxy in wood, and that's no problem. Take your time, enjoy the process. Okay, I'm gonna sand this up to 220 grit and we'll be ready for the next step. Let's do it. Pro tip guys, I haven't used this sandpaper to its full lifespan, so I'm gonna put it in my spare bucket and when I'm doing projects that don't require brand new sandpaper like teaching classes or woodworking projects with my kids, perfect treasure trove of sandpaper, don't waste it. I just used my random orbital sander to put about a 1 8 inch round over over this edge. I also did it underneath that edge to make a nice smooth transition for that epoxy. I like the way that these cracks filled in with that black. That came out really nice. I sanded this up to 220 grit. I'm gonna wipe the dust and I'm ready for my seal coat. For a project this small, I don't need a super big squeegee. This would work, but you don't need it. I'm gonna use just a little Bondo spreader, a business card, a credit card, an old one of course, would work really good just spreading this seal coat. When doing seal coats, you only need one ounce per square foot. This is about a square foot. We only need one ounce of epoxy. Epoxy can be tricky when you're mixing it in very small amounts. So I'm gonna use my graduated mixing container. And if you look here on the side, there's a one-to-one -one marking here. Now that's very simple. I can do a very small amount of epoxy by first filling it up to this one and then filling it up to that one. And I don't need to mix a large amount of epoxy. Project coat, let's get started. I guess we are started. Let's keep going. There's one, two, one. Question of the day, how do you clean your paint stick? You don't, you just flip it over. You know what I love about mixing epoxy? I love mixing epoxy because you get to think about other things. Just mix your epoxy, think about what's coming up in your day, or maybe your life goals. You could even write a book in your head while mixing epoxy. I really think black and tan was the way to go on this box elder. It's really light and that black looks really sharp. I can't wait to get it wet again with this epoxy. You can see the sanding scratches and it's made it dull and that's just fine. As soon as we wet it out again, boom, it'll be like brand new. I'm gonna use my gloved hands to apply the seal coat to the edges, that's just fine. I could use a torch or a heat gun to remove this amount of air out of this clear coat. Either of them are gonna work, the torch will work faster, but let's test the heat gun. 
I'm really excited about that. It looks really good. It brought that box elder back to life. We're gonna let this seal coat set. We'll come back and do another seal coat as soon as it's dry. Think about the ability to sell river table furniture, tabletops, desktops, all kinds of things using wood and epoxy, having a bunch of these samples. You can pick out species and metallic color combined right there in living color. I think that would really help your clients make decisions on the spot and get you more jobs in the shop. How to consolidate your trash using a glove? Just like that. Okay guys, we're ready for our next seal coat. This first one is still quite tacky, and that's okay. That means we don't have to sand between seal coats. If it's dried all the way, that's where you need to sand, wipe the dust, and then apply your next seal coat. You only need one ounce per square foot, but again, this is a small project, and mixing one ounce is sometimes a little difficult. So we have a little bit more than an ounce, and that's okay. I'm gonna use all of that on this seal coat. This wood is thirsty. You can see some dry spots, and that's okay. Each seal coat you do is going to look better and better. There's a lot of value in doing a small project. You learn all the same steps you would as a big project with little stress because it's small. You're not going to waste a lot of money in epoxy. If you made a mistake, that's okay. This is easy to get right and this gives you the confidence to take on a little bit bigger projects as you continue down the epoxy road. This is a perfect example of why seal coats are important. The epoxy is being drawn in in this section. That's what I need to address before doing a final flood coat, and that's why we do seal coats. All right, we got our guts. Okay, that second seal coat is done. It gave us really good coverage. There's no dry spots left on this wood. Another thing I wanted to mention is that pen dot that was a little problem yesterday. It looks as if it filled in. If it isn't, we'll address that by filling it with a little bit of a burning stick. If it is, no need to worry. What we're gonna do is sand. We're gonna wipe the dust. We're gonna apply our third and final seal coat and we're ready for our last step. Let's get going. Pro tip, clean the epoxy off of your gloves before grabbing your torch, your heat gun, or any other tools. It'll keep them less sticky, they'll last a lot longer, and you won't glue the buttons in place. I'm gonna let this set up for a few hours. I think I'll be able to get that final flood coat on today, and this project will be all coated. I'll let it dry, I'll sand the drips, and I'll apply my hardware. Okay guys, we're ready to rock and roll. We got this coat dry, it's time for the next step. The key here is we're gonna make this cannibalized clock mechanism work in our piece of wood, but the post sticking out from this mechanism is short. Therefore, we need to recess or router a slot into the back of our project, and that's exactly what I'm gonna do. But first, I need to make a template so that I could clamp that template to this section and router that out professionally where it looks like it was done with a machine. There's our center. Nice. So you can just see the top of the clock mechanism. So we need to go through quite a bit more. When I routered this, I went all the way through my actual black that I tinted the river through. What did I learn? Well, I learned I better make my river proud so that uh, when I do these seal coats, it can go through or get a longer post, right? So a longer post on your clock mechanism will actually allow you to keep that color and not go into the seal coat. If you're gonna embed a clock mechanism in the back of your project, you better go opaque color all the way to the surface and you won't have a funky clear square that you gotta spray black. Okay, Chris, the guy behind the camera, had a great idea how to hide this black square. Chris, tell us about it, man. So we can make a mini river um, and mask it with clear epoxy instead of with tape, which would make a hard line. Okay, so you're gonna actually add a little bit of black metallic over this square 
to camouflage it. Right. Welcome to woodworking school. <laughs> okay, that should be a fair amount. I'm gonna pour clear and then I'm gonna remove some of the clear where I want the black to stay. If you wanna reuse your chop brushes, cause it's just a little project, you can store them in acetone. Acetone will prevent them from stiffening up. It usually gives you about a month of good use out of a brush. So now I'm gonna just take some of this around this square and I'm just gonna move it off. Now let's pour some of this black in there. Guys, this shows what experience really does for you. When you're trying a project and you have it in theory, you think it's gonna be just A1 amazing and no hiccups or speed bumps along the journey of, of that project. Well, in fact, there are. And that's just the fun of woodworking and art and epoxy and countertops and floors and all of these projects. That's why experience is key. And that's why this kit allows you to gain experience on a small scale without stress and just having fun. Let's recap. This is a fun project and the steps are simple. First, we built a form, then we sealed our edges. After that, we poured the river tinted with black metallic. You can choose any color you want to accentuate your project. After that, we did our seal coats and then finally our flood coat. Visit us anytime at StoneCoatCountertops.com. Go check out our woodworking school projects. Get yours right now because this project will open your mind to the possibilities of woodworking and epoxy. particular project that doesn't justify how it's done, you know what I mean? Or like we do a lot of shower panels, we do a lot of uh, Wayne's coat, we do a lot of like game rooms, stuff like that, garage floors, all 3D metallic. Garage floors. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Architects would, it's like a candy store, man. Yeah, okay. Well, take it easy, brother. Three, two, one, action. I go to stonecoatcountertops.com for all my epoxy needs. Visit stonecoatcountertops.com for all of your epoxy needs. <clears throat> Visit us at stonecoatcountertops.com for all of your epoxy needs. I'll get you next time, Gadget. Next time.